Hey, my name is Michael, and today we're going to be looking at this 2016 Fleetwood Excursion 35E. It offers a 340 horsepower Cummins diesel pusher engine. Most of these Fleetwood Excursions come with a 300 horsepower. 2016, it came with a 340 horsepower motor. From there, we can talk about how it's got a 12 month, 15,000 mile basic warranty, a 36 month, 45,000 mile structural warranty, a 36 month, 50,000 mile chassis warranty, and a 36 month, 50,000 mile powertrain warranty. It's got a Cummins i6 diesel pusher motor. The chassis is a Freightliner. Chassis model is an XC series. It's a six cylinder diesel engine. It's got 660 foot pounds of torque, so if you want to pull anything, no problem hooking up a boat, hooking up a car behind it and pulling it. It's a seven liter engine. It is a turbocharged engine and it is a two wheel drive coach. It's 36 and three quarters feet long and it's eight and a half feet wide. The motorhome offers two slide outs which slides out your kitchen and slides out your master bedroom. So now let's go around the outside and talk about each and every compartment and what's inside of them. So your first cabinet, there's nothing really special to it. It's just a storage cabinet. The current owners are using it for miscellaneous plumbing and manuals for other utilities. Your second locker is another large locker. It is sealed, so if you need anything that doesn't get dusty or anything like that, it's a great locker and it is not a pass-through locker. It's just on this side. Above that locker, as you can see, there is a TV station. It's got its own outside receiver, meaning you can watch something outside and something different inside, and you've got your own speakers to do so. You've also got your radio unit so that you can play something with your Bluetooth uh, from your phone, playing some different music outside. Just locks right back. Then your next cabinet is your propane cabinet. This is where you'll go to fill up your propane. Enough said. Your next cabinet is another locker. However, it is a deep locker and it is a pass-through locker, so it goes all the way to the other side. Again, this one has a seal, so no dust, dirt, mud, water, anything gets in there. The next cabinet is another large locker, and it is not a pass-through, but it is a deep locker, and this is also where your internal vacuum bag is. So when you empty the internal built-in vacuum, that's where you go. Then towards the back, past the rear wheels, past the rear axle, is where your battery bank and your diesel exhaust fluid is. It's a diesel pusher, so you will have to fill up the diesel exhaust fluid periodically, and if you ever need access to your batteries, here you go. Then the last locker, don't have it, but it is where you access your exhaust from. Then as we move to the back, as you can see, you've got your receiver hitch, so you can pull whatever you need along with a seven pin plug for any large trailers. You also have your camera on the back that runs anytime that your engine is running. Then we'll start on the lockers from this side and move our way forward. The first locker is the battery bank for the motor. So if you ever need to jumpstart your motor, it's right here. And then you also have access to your power surge transfer switch. Next right here is access to your like fresh water pump and it gives you some storage for your electrical hookups and it just folds up real nice in there and it stores it for you. Also, again, it's got this seal so it keeps anything from getting inside. Moving forwards, we have your water station. This is where you'll empty. This is where you'll add water. You've got your different filtrations. You've, you've got a hose in case you wanna wash out the outside. This is where you'll go to empty your holding tanks. From there, we move on to a storage unit. They currently have all of their hoses for draining the black and the gray water tanks. Again, it's got the seal on it to keep any dirt, dust, anything like that out. Then we move forwards. This is one of your deep lockers. It goes all the way, it passes through to the other side. Then we've got another locker, which gives you access to your fresh water tank. And you can visually see just how full or empty your fresh water is. Then from there, we just got a nice little small locker right here. It's about the size of like a three or a five gallon water jug. So whatever you want to put in there. And then right here at the front is where your washer fluid, 
slash, you have an air hookup. So if you want access to an air compressor from your air brakes, you've got a female coupling right in this cabinet. So that's the outside. Let me go ahead and pop out the slide out so you can see just how it expands. Uh, and then we'll go into the inside and talk about what's on the inside. The passenger side also has an awning that flips out so that while you're outside at your campsite, at the KOA, you can flip up your TV, get your awning, and get some shade. All that it is is a simple flip of a switch and it starts to fold down. All right, so let's talk about this coach from the very front to the back. First off, you have an electronic visor that lowers down. It really helps with the heat management while you're trying to run your AC or in the winter trying to keep your heat in. Besides that, we have your gauges which we'll go over. We have your rear view camera and your left and right side cameras. You have your internal radio. You also have these cabinets up on the top which there's nothing really special to them but it does allow you to have more storage. Something that's great about this area is right above my head is actually a bunk bed system. So there's a switch and this entire roof comes down and it lowers down into a bed and we will show you that right now. So what this is great for is it gives you a nice platform and it's a very sturdy platform to sit on. Um, also what's great about it is you don't have a big bulky bed. So just go ahead and have an air up mattress and when you need it, fold this down, air up the air up mattress. You can put these guards around it so nobody falls off. Uh, it's a great little feature that not very many motorhomes have. So we're gonna talk about your entire instrument cluster right here. Very first, you have your outdoor utility light. This just helps you see at night. Then you have your ICC switch. Then you have your engine brake retarder followed by an auxiliary start switch in case your main batteries die. It'll take the power from the generator batteries and use it to power your engine. You have your shift controller right here. Just like any diesel pusher, you push it, put it in drive and you're good to go. You can also manually change gears with the shift up shift down switches then you have your controller to adjust your side view mirrors followed by your windshield wipers followed by your high beams fog lights uh, you can also brighten or dim the cluster to what you prefer then moving on you have your general cluster with your battery voltage oil pressure fuel gauge rpms mile per hour uh, your engine temperature, your air brakes, both PSI on both air brakes. You have this nifty little controller right here on the right and that's what lets you toggle through your uh, information system on this cluster. You've got a nice cup holder so you can have all of your drinks right here and you have your turn indicator switch right here. Also what's pretty nifty is whenever you put your left turn signal on, your backup camera switches to the left camera for your blind spot and then whenever you switch it to the right it switches over to the right side blind spot and then whenever you get rid of your turning signals it goes back to the rear you have your general AC controls right here for your front cab and then you have your generator on off switch and your radio controller switching it from either uh, the driving mode or the parked mode then you have your visor switch and you still have a couple different switches for some other additional auxiliary rocker switches for the future. You do have a trailer brake controller unit so that is very good if you plan on hauling anything. It is a Takancha Voyager trailer brake controller. So then you have two front captain chairs. Both of them are controlled electronically with uh, little switches just like your typical car and then also your, your passenger seat is on a swivel so if you want to stop watching the road and start watching TV just flip that switch and swivel it around and you can watch the TV as we make our way back we have all kinds of general cabinets on both sides this side has a nice uh, cork board so you can pin different national park brochures and KOA brochures and stuff like that to remember your travels then you have your access to your DVD player and what would be your antenna satellite hookup. 
and then just general storage. What I like about these cabinets is that they're very tall. Most motorhomes don't have a very tall cabinet, but these are very tall and deep. They're all on uh, gas charged hinges, so they stay locked up in the upward position and they do not rattle while you're driving. Above the door, you have all of your controls, everything from your bed lift controller to your engine, to your generator controller, to your tank test and your battery test. So this tells you how full your black water tank is, your gray water, your fresh tank, and your uh, gas. You've got your slide out room controls, you've got your battery connect and disconnect, your auto jacks, your AC controller, your antenna, and uh, your general power controller system. Something that's pretty nifty about this motorhome is that it's got two recliners. So that seat just comes right out and reclines just like that. The other one does too, it's a nice love seat recliner. Then over on the driver's side, you have your, your kitchen nook. And what's great about the kitchen nook is that you can take this table off and you can turn this into a small bed. Really, a full-size person is not gonna sleep on it, but any small child will definitely be able to sleep on it. You've also got your TV right here, uh, so while you're traveling, you can watch it in your recliner and or sit next to it in this kitchen nook. So let's talk more about the kitchen. The kitchen has quite a bit of counter space, and, and the reason why is there are granite covers for all of your um, appliances. Like right here, the range, which is a gas range. You cannot beat a gas range. I do not like electric ones. It is a propane gas range. Uh, they have these covers that expand your counter space. The same with the sink. Also, right here on the side, it's just got this nice little flip up uh, end table that helps you with like your spices, anything like that. It helps you get stuff off of the ground, out of cabinets, and easy access to it. You've got multiple cabinets in the kitchen. There is this deep cabinet. And the reason why I like it is because it's on a turntable. So anything that you place on it, you just have a turntable and you can spin it. And whatever's in the back, you can get to the front very, very easily. Uh, then you just have your typical small cabinet right here with a single shelf. You've got your range in all different kinds of drawers on both sides. Plenty of plenty of drawers for different utensils and knives and forks and bowls and spoons and anything like that. You've also got a microwave that will double as a convection oven. So you could probably cook brownies in here and cookies. So everybody loves brownies and cookies. This does both. It's a microwave and an oven. So let's talk about your refrigerator. It is a proper motorhome refrigerator with a door lock. You just flip the lock and now you have access to both sides. It runs on electricity when you're hooked up to the power or when the generator's running, or it runs off of LPG, also known as propane gas, while you don't. Up here you have a little bit of a pantry with some baskets that slide out for ease of access uh, to whatever you have back there. And then as we move to the back, you have a legitimate pantry for your smaller spices and chips and stuff like that. There's also a door right here where you can slide it and separate the bedrooms from the kitchen and the living room. So right here you've got your twin double bunk beds. We also have a ladder which makes it very easy to get in and out of because more than likely you're gonna have small children sleeping right here. There are also TVs for the top and the bottom so do not worry if they are restless you can just put a movie on and also you don't have to worry because if one wants to watch The Greatest Showman and the other one wants to watch Moana you can do that not a problem piece of cake easy just load the DVDs into the individual TVs then right here you've got deep drawers they can hold so much gear shoes pants shirts jackets anything like that so deep I'm all about these drawers you also have a large cabinet down here which gives you access to your breaker uh, switch, your, your breaker box, and other general electrical nonsense. Then right here on my left, which is the passenger side, you've got the bathroom. It's just a general bathroom with a nice little sink, and you've got your medicine cabinet with some Advil, and then a nice little side corner cabinet. Plenty of room for your general makeup, deodorant, cologne, anything like that. 
Got some storage underneath your sink, relatively deep for a motor coach. Uh, your built-in toilet paper holder and your toilet, of course. And then you have your shower, which I would consider to be a walk-in shower with a nice little skylight. So you've got plenty of room and just a door with a lock on the outside so it doesn't slide. You just undo that lock, close the door, and you are good to go. So now we're moving to the master bedroom. I know you don't want this tour to be over, but we are coming to an end. You've got your own door so you can separate it from the bunk room, from the bathroom, and from the front living room slash kitchen area. The master bedroom is a queen size bed with a hydraulic assist pop-up for your other general necessities. Right now, you've got your pole for your table up in the front and the cushion for the kitchenette area. In the master bed, you've got cabinets above the bed. They are very deep cabinets. They are probably good for your valuable stuff. At the foot of the master bed, you've got a nice sitting area that could be turned into a kid's bed if you needed to. It's long enough for them to uh, lay out. However, it's, it's just wide enough to where they can fall asleep, but if they roll at all in the middle of the night, they will fall off. There are drawers underneath that sitting area. Good size, I would say it's an average size drawer. All of them are on nice tracks and they open and close very nicely. You've got your TV in the master bedroom. It is mounted to the wall. It is a Sony TV and then you have your DVD player. It is a smart DVD player. So you can get your Netflix and everything like that as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. Then we'll start talking about the closet, the important thing. So we saved the best for last. It is the closet. You can see the, the mirrors on the door. You open it up. You can fold this door in. It is a good size closet. It would be weird if I came and sat in here, but you can see it could clearly fit me inside of the closet. So it's a good size closet. It's got a single clothes hanging rod. And then right here next to it, you've got another closet with two big shelves. You don't have any hanging rods, but you can easily add one if you want to. And then to your surprise, yes, I know, there is a third closet. This is where they have the air mattress for that front bedroom that folds down from the roof. Then underneath both of the mirrors, you have good drawers, good deep drawers that can hold whatever you need them to hold. So to wrap everything up, that is our 2016 Fleetwood Excursion 35E. A couple other general details that you need to know, it is ready to sell. So if you wanna buy it, come pick it up today. Also, it's got 18,413 miles on it. We might put a couple more here or there before you come buy it because we gotta fill it up with gas and, and keep the tires moving and stuff like that. Besides that, if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to us. And again, my name's Michael and thank you so much for watching and have a great day.